for the first 30 years of my life, I used to get sick all the time. I mean, chronic bronchitis three times a year. Well, I turned 62 this year and I don't remember the last time I've been sick. I don't even think it was in this century. So what do I do? What do most people do? The first thing they do is they say, I caught it from somebody and what do I take, right? That is so completely wrong. First of all, the catching it from somebody, you can put 10 people in a room with some disease, half of them will get it and half of them won't. Why is that? Well, half of them have a strong immune system and half of them don't. So what weakens your immune system? Well, obviously alcohol, smoking, and all that kind of stuff does because alcohol is a poison. And not only is it a poison that kills things, beer and wine is full of sugar. And what does sugar do? It feeds bacteria. So it wipes out your immune system and then it starts feeding the bad guys. Second thing is smoking. And I mean smoking anything, even that recreational funny stuff. It weakens your immune system. And another thing that people do a lot of, which they don't want to think about, is coffee. Oh, but it has antioxidants. Yeah, but it also has polyaromatic acrylamides and tannins, which block the absorption of nutrients in your body. And coffee's really bitter, so what do people do to make it taste better? They add sugar and dairy, and what does that do? It feeds bacteria. Now, the first layer of protection that your body gives you is all the surface areas of your body that come in contact with the outside world have a protective barrier, and that is acid, because acid kills bacteria. Your skin, your sinuses, your stomach, your vagina, anything that comes in contact with the outside world is acidic, except your mouth. It can't be acidic because if it was acidic, your teeth would melt. <laughs> That's the first area where bacteria breeds. And in fact, if you have bleeding gums or red areas, in there, that means you have bacteria growth and that can get into your bloodstream and cause heart problems. That's bad. All right, so that's the first thing we should talk about. What is it that breeds bacteria in your mouth? Well, what is the universal fuel supply for all living things on this planet? Sugar. Doesn't matter what kind of sugar it is. You name it, glucose, fructose, it doesn't matter if it's from nature or man-made. Sugar is a fuel supply. It burns easily. It's great fuel for anything, good or bad. And it's not just sugar. It's also bread, wheat, anything baked in an oven. Oh, bacteria loves that. Even dairy. That's why bread and cheese grows mold on it. It loves that stuff. Whatever you love, bacteria loves. You're both living things and you both love the same things. You like bread and you like sugar <laughs> and dairy. All right, so let's say you have good oral hygiene. Well, that takes us to the next level. Anything you put in your mouth ends up in your stomach, right? Well, what is your stomach? That is your best line of defense. It's a pot of acid. Nothing gets through the stomach without going through that acid. Now, there's a big problem here because most people, believe it or not, do not have enough stomach acid. And you think, oh, but I have acid indigestion. I feel acid gurgling up my esophagus. Well, yeah, you think you have too much acid? That's actually because you have too little. And the reason for that is you have yeast in your stomach and it's weakening the upper sphincter and some of the acid, even though it's weaker, it's still acid coming up in your esophagus and burning it. And the worst thing you can do is take calcium pills or antacids. I'll make another video about that. But the point is your stomach acid is what protects you from anything from the outside outside world that comes into your mouth that you swallow. Bacteria, viruses, fungus, mold, yeast, all that bad stuff gets killed by the acid. So what weakens your stomach acid so weak that things can get through and make you really sick? Well, one thing is bread. Bread soaks up acid like a sponge. Put some bread in some acid or any kind of liquid and it just soaks it up. It's a sponge. Most things that people eat have wheat in it. It's baked in an oven and that's a sponge. And not only does it soak up acid, it also feeds bacteria, especially yeast. You have yeast problems, you're probably eating bread and wheat products and dairy. All right, so bread weakens the stomach acid and it also grows yeast. Yeast is something that weakens the stomach acid even more. And now you're open for H. pylori to take effect in there. It drills into your stomach walls and excretes ammonia, which the purpose of ammonia is to weaken the stomach acid and neutralize it even more. Now there are health people, health conscious people who say, ah, but I don't eat that. I do all the healthy stuff. I do alkaline water. I do a lot of calcium. <laughs> alkaline water and calcium neutralize stomach acid. You just wipe out one of the biggest parts of your protection system, and that is lowering your stomach acid. So now all the bacteria can get through the stomach into your intestine, and that's where the party starts, because what is your intestine? It's a smorgasbord. It's a buffet of food. That's where the food breaks down, and it's ready to be eaten and used by anything. So now you got bacteria growing there. you got SIBO. 
SIBO, you got all kinds of weird, oh, and by the way, what else kills your immune system more than anything else? Antibiotics. If you get sick, the first thing the doctor does is give you antibiotics. What do antibiotics do? They kill everything in you that is a biotic, meaning bacteria. Now there's bad bacteria and good bacteria. Did you know that 70 to 80% of your immune system is bacteria? It grows in your gut. It's called a microbiome and that is where most of the action happens that makes you strong or weak. If you wipe it out with antibiotics, you are screwed, my friend, and antibiotics stay in your system for years. You can't just get rid of it like in a week or a month. I mean, antibiotics should be for an emergency. It's not something you take because you have a cold or a flu or it's just some stupid little thing. Because what's the first thing nature's gonna do if you take antibiotics? It creates antibiotic resistant bacteria and now you're really in trouble. All right, anyway, so now all this bad stuff that's floating in the air got through your mouth, through your stomach, now it's in your intestine and it's chowing down on a smorgasbord buffet of all that food you eat. Now, I bet a lot of the food you eat has got wheat and sugar and dairy in it. So now you've got the bacteria growing like crazy. First is you wipe out your immune system so your defense system goes down. Secondly, you allow it into you by taking out your barriers and you feed it with sugar, wheat, and dairy. Most living things, they live off the same stuff. That's why bacteria, viruses, parasites, mold, fungus, yeast, all that stuff grows inside you, especially if you create an environment that's conducive for all of this to happen. And that is the problem with most people in the modern world. It's the diet and the lifestyle. So I'm sorry to say you can't blame it on that person or that person. I caught it from them. I caught it from them. Look, bacteria, viruses, and mold, and fungus, and yeast, and everything is floating around all the time. You can put, like I said, 10 people, 100 people in a room with a horrible disease. A lot of them will get sick, some of them will die, and some of them won't. Why? How come those people that don't get sick or don't die, why are they okay? Because of the reasons I just told you, they have a strong immune system. Don't blame it on genetics. Oh, they have better genetics. I was sick the first 30 years of my life. I was so sick, I almost died several times. I was that sick. It was bad. It was changing my diet and lifestyle that changed my life. I haven't been sick in, I don't remember even, I mean, it was the 1900s. It was something, 19 something. So yes, you can change. Don't blame it on something outside of yourself. You gotta take full control of what makes you sick and what doesn't. All right, so what do you do? All right, so this, this takes us to the next step. All right, Marcus, I get it, I get it. It's my fault, I ate the wrong foods, I partied, I ate bread, cheese, <laughs> I ate alcohol, I smoked something, I, I, I couldn't put that cake down and, and, and the pies and the cookies and whatever it is, I get it. All right, so what do I do? All right, well, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta clear the crap that you put in your body out of your body. You gotta totally clear it out and you can't cheat. You, if you even put a tiny bit of sugar or, or wheat or bread or, or alcohol, or anything in there, guess what? You're back to step one because that immediately fuels the desperate enemy that's trenched down inside you. You know, it, it, you're sending a care package to your enemy. So you can't, I'm sorry, but you, you gotta stop doing the things that cause it and you gotta stop doing the things that feed it. That's the most important thing. You gotta stop feeding your enemy. And that's not fun. Even fruit juice is high sugar. So stop the orange juice, stop the fruit juice. That is concentrated sugar. Anything that's sweet, stop it. I am sorry for a while you have to do bitter, nasty things that you don't like, like green juice. And I don't I don't mean sweet green juice or just fast. I mean, just do a water fast or something. So step one is to cut off the fuel supply to your enemy. Anybody who studied war through the years, especially like World War II, if you wanna stop the tanks from coming, you don't attack the tank, you cut off its fuel supply. You cut off the trucks that give it the fuel and the ammunition that it needs to do its job. And that's what you have inside you. You've got an enemy inside you and you have to cut off its fuel supply so it has nothing to function on. And it will either die or it will exit your body and go somewhere else. That's the first step. And how do you do that? Well, I've showed you this every beginning of every year. Let's do it again. First thing is stop eating the bread, the sugar, the pastries, the alcohol, the coffee, and all. I have already talked about this stuff. So you gotta clear out the mess that you've created. Your colon is clogged up, your liver is clogged up, your kidneys are working overtime. You gotta clean them out. So if you wanna get better fast, the first thing to do, no matter what, 
Oh, stop with the whining. It's just water. It's amazing how people don't think twice about poisoning themselves with beer and pizza, but water, oh my God, it was so scary. <laughs> I mean, think about it. It's no different than drinking water, washing your hair, taking a shower, or washing your car. It's water. All it does is wash out your colon. That's it. It just washes the crap out. If You will be amazed how fast you get better doing this. The people who have done this, leave comments down below for the people who haven't done it and tell them how fast you get better doing this. If you have a migraine, if you have a headache, you have some kind of blockage in your body. You're going to say, yeah, but my pain is up here. How can something down here? Just do it. If you have a migraine, if you have a headache, if your energy is run down, if you're depressed, if you're sluggish, if you were just like, oh, I can't move, then do an enema and watch how fast, how fast you're, you go from oh, to yeah, wow, and you feel like dancing. Just washing yourself out makes so much difference. It is amazing. I mean, I made a video about it, how to do it. It's really easy. Kara made an, a video about it, how to do it, and her name is on the bottle. So obviously it must be something good if Kara's name is on here. So I highly suggest you do this first before you think about taking something. It's just water. And don't think about doing a coffee enema. Of course, coffee addicts will swear about putting coffee in there. Yeah, you're going to get a stimulation for it. Your colon is very porous and whatever you put in there is going to go right into your bloodstream. That's why a lot of cocaine addicts put cocaine up their butt because it goes right in their bloodstream. So does coffee. It, you, bam, you get your, your you get your caffeine rush immediately faster than if you were to drink it. Coffee also kills your gut probiotic flora, which you need. There's tannins in there. There's polyaromatic acrylamides, all kinds of things in coffee you do not want to take when you're sick. Matter of fact, stop the coffee period anyway. Just use water. The best solvent in the world is water. Spring water, filtered spring water. I I suggest not to use distilled because you might get an electrolyte imbalance. Use just spring water, filtered spring water. Anyway, water is the fastest way to get better. Now, this does not, this only cleans out your colon. This does not clean out your liver and kidneys. So the first step is don't eat anything or only eat good stuff. And I suggest green things, bitter things, green juices, stuff like that. Try to avoid anything that's in the sweet world. Number three, go to bed early. I mean, eight o'clock or nine o'clock. And I mean sleep, no kind of distractions, no radio, no TV, no nothing, no light coming through the window. It needs to be black, it needs to be silent, and you need to be sleeping. And to help you sleep, you need to not eat for two to three hours before you go to bed because digestion takes up 70% of your body's energy. It takes about four to five hours. So if you are eating before you go to bed, you're not really sleeping and you're not healing that much. Okay, that's the next one. The next one, probiotics. You need probiotics to be healthy. It's 70% of your immune system. So take probiotics. Culture fermented food is good. Do what you can to get probiotics into your system. Read Heal Yourself 101. This is really important. Uh, it, it just walks you through everything. Read it and follow it. As a matter of fact, if you read Heal Yourself 101 and you keep following, oh, and the, the other thing is a, th a thing called Plague Buster. You always say, well, tell me what to take. Tell me what to take. Well, if you are going to take something to get yourself better, do some, put some apple cider vinegar in water and drink it. Like a couple teaspoons in a half a glass of water or a couple of tablespoons if you can handle it. In a glass of water, three times a day. If you have my parasite pills, take that because that kills things. Uh, take it 10 hours apart from the probiotics, of course. Uh, liver formula helps clean out your liver, but the main thing is the apple cider vinegar more than anything. And there's also a plague buster potion. And I'll show you how to make your own homemade plague buster potion. It will kill anything that goes through your body. So stop eating the bad food or stop eating at all. Do an enema or two or three. <laughs> Take probiotics, go to bed early, plague buster drink. Read Heal Yourself 101. It's a free download. Come on, guys. There's no excuse. You can be better within a day or two. Seriously, back on your feet and dancing. Matter of fact, if you read and follow Heal Yourself 101 and you stick to it indefinitely, you might never get sick again, ever. You won't even know what it's like. I've forgotten what it's like. It's been decades since I've been really sick. I mean, it's, you shouldn't be sick. And if you're right on the edge, if you're one of these people that's like, oh, I feel something coming on. I'm right on the edge. You're not healthy. You should never be right on the edge. You should be dancing full of life the whole time, always. That's what life is supposed to be like. So the more you follow nature, the less cooked food you have, the less crap things made with, you know, they didn't make ovens in nature. The sun is the only oven we have and it doesn't ever heat anything over 118 degrees on the hottest day in the hottest place. I'm in the desert here. 
okay? If a fruit drops to the ground and the sun bakes it and bakes it and bakes it, it never gets over 110, 115. If you were to take that dried fruit and plant it on the ground, it would still grow into a tree because there is life in that. If you took that same plant, put it in an oven and baked it at 350 degrees, or whatever, it would be dead. Heat kills life. All right, so the only oven that you should be using is the same kind of heat that the sun uses, and that doesn't get over 118 Fahrenheit, 45 Celsius. Take a hint from nature if you want to be healthy. All right, that's my lecturing for today. That's how you should stay healthy, get healthy, be healthy. If you're sick, download the Getting Sick eBook at MarcusEbooks.com. It'll tell you the difference between viruses and bacteria, why antibiotics are useless, what causes cold, flu, fever, sore throat, laryngitis, staph, strep, MRSA, what herbs to take, how to make the Plague Buster potion, and everything you need to do to get better fast. Listen to Marcus and all right, so there you go. I don't know how many people are left because this is stuff most people don't want to hear. They want to take their chances with the stuff that they love. They don't want to stop all the things that they love. And they don't want to do the things that are not fun because that takes effort. But uh, there's a few people. There's a few people that actually hang in there and do what I say and they get better faster. And I'm proud of you. Those are the, you, the, the, you are the few. You are the elite and I'm proud of you. And uh, for the rest of you, well, do what you can. You got to understand first why you get sick and that's why this channel exists and then I tell you what to do about it But it's usually not what you want to do because it doesn't require simply taking something It means you got to put the effort in of stopping to do the things that make you sick. All right. Well There you go. I hope you get better I hope you find the strength within yourself to do the right thing and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye